in the session. Uh, Prograph is the only almost practically available framework or uh, life cycle for enterprise architecture plan. Because the enterprise architecture plan itself is a great uh, subject by itself and it's very vast and uh, most of the things are very much understand. It is not going to be possible to implement enterprise architecture planning if there is no standard life cycle process. Same like software life cycle development. Right? You know, uh, software development is a very tedious process. Right? In software development, also, you play on the abstraction side. When you are working the abstraction, Unless until you put the things together in a life cycle where things can be implemented systematically, step by step, right? With every step having a proper deliverable, okay, tangible, deliverable, it's not going to completely uh, engineer. Okay. So, same way. In enterprise architecture planning, we also have to have a life cycle to implement architecture for enterprises. Uh, Prograph is a kind of conglomeration of uh, you know, kind of group of professionals who got together and just to you know, analyze things uh, initially supported by everyone, uh, and eventually other people uh, and go back in the mid-2000s when there was a need for that. Yeah, Specific life cycle to be interpreted or a framework, uh, need for a framework for enterprise Especially the way IT can understand and implement, okay, as well as business. Because uh, enterprise architecture planning was always seen as a great thing by business as well as by the technology people. Nobody can not they, they could not, neither. Uh, technology or business to be able to really uh, get together and understand architecture plan. So that's why uh, you know, they wanted to come together with a life cycle, the framework of do's and don't do the simple things, you know, uh, how to follow through the discipline of architecture. In the business of digital transformation world, Prograph has its own relevance. Okay. Uh, because Prograph gives a shape for the life cycle of every artifact. Artifact being anything, any component, any business process, or a service, or any, even a simple document can be. An artifact, right? So, when, this, when we are talking about digital transformation or even not business transformation at large, we are talking about transformation of every component of your enterprise as a whole. Unless until each one of these artifacts goes through the life cycle process in a very good streamlined life cycle process, it is not possible to achieve any kind of transformation. So, we are talking about transformation, right? Uh, uh, we as a company you know, having products to help companies to do the business and digital transformation. But how can we achieve it unless until there are a set, set of process standards by which we move all the artifacts to do that? One is uh, the creation of new artifacts for the future state. But the other thing is taking the current state artifact to future state artifact and moving the you know the whole thing into that process. Okay. That's the uh, okay. now TOCAF uh, is difficult to digest, okay, to understand. But being IT, you know, uh, people may 
have an advantage to implement it. If I you now explain ProGap to a business guy, a uh, business crowd, they, they definitely find it very, very difficult to understand. Uh, or visualize. Okay? Um, when it comes to engineers, you have gone through an engineering process with you, right? academically at least. You know, in order to move a good, to finish a good from one to the, you know, from raw material to the finished good, there is a set of process that you need to follow, right? That much you understand as an engineer, and there are the technologies involved, the machineries involved in doing, you know, the transformation of the product from raw material to finished product. And you also have gone through the process of how put it into a framework of life cycle. You know, you take one product of the life cycle of a product to it becomes a finished product. Right? For example, ice cream. Right? The finished product is delicious ice cream. The raw material, the very first step is milk. Right? Milk becomes ice cream. But there are lots of processes in it. Right? If you see from the engineering perspective, from moving the, uh, the transformation of milk to end product, which is ice cream, you, you need a lot of processing to be done. Right? And you need to follow the steps on a timely fashion with quality, with right ingredients and right catalyst to act upon to move the milk from move the raw material, which is milk, to make it to the delicious ice cream. Right? The same way, the raw material in business transformation world is pieces of information, pieces of organization. Okay? Each piece of the organization should be put together to create the current state first. Okay? Even the raw material had a state, right? You should not, you know, you should not lose focus here. The raw material was not, you know, you cannot see raw material as something which is uh, which is not a product. Raw material itself was a product, is a product only. It is, it, it is a, what you it's a matter, right? It's a matter. Milk is a matter, right? It has chemical number. It has a state. It has a state. It has a form. It has shape. Presents, it takes shape of any container that holds the bar. It has color, it has, it doesn't have smell, it has some smell, right? But all these characteristics are there for milk as well. Now, you first have to make sure those characteristics are Okay, so uh, this is what ProGAF is. Life cycle, the entire life cycle of ProGAF. So, preliminary uh, architecture A, B, business architecture, A means architecture vision, B is business architecture, C is information technology architecture, and D is 
technology architecture e means opportunities and solutions migration planning implementation governance and architecture change. this is what product is it's very simple okay by representation it is very simple but putting it into effect is the single most tougher task If you look into this representation, uh, we have program architecture context to context iteration. Basically, every stage of it you see in software development life cycle, right? it starts from the spiral model, it goes on circles, right? It starts from requirement analysis, then design, development. Testing, implementation, maintenance, then incident cycle starts. So our product goes through the cycle uh, of iterations. Same way, there can be many iterations between analysis and design, right? You do the analysis of requirement and send it to design. The design team they start working on the design and they come back with a lot of new problems which you may have to go back and correct it. So there is an iteration, okay? Not not, not always it's one uh, a unidirection, it's bidirection. It goes and then comes back. Then after two, three times revolving between the requirements and the design, finally the design gets settled. It goes to development. Same thing between testing and design, testing and development, development and design. Every time you design something, the development goes and they try to do some, some implementation according to the design. It doesn't work, right? They come back with new solutions or with their failures, then the design has to go back and make the corrections, okay? Not everybody is super intelligent, not everything can be accomplished in one shot. Everything is a process, okay? It takes time to build everything. It takes multiple failures to achieve result. There is no doubt about it. All it matters is whether we are realizing it and moving it, moving forward on an overall fashion. Okay. Same way we go there, we go to the life cycle. Uh, A to B. Basically, from preliminary stage where the goals of the organization is set. Okay. The goals of the organization, the leadership comes with, this is what I, my, I want my company to be. Okay. They set the goals with set of uh, targets, okay. tangible targets. It can be with, uh, revenue or it can be for adding more customers without much increase in revenue. Whatever the target is. There's going to be a set of projects. Uh, every executive team is going to come. Then that's called the preliminary step. Without goals, nothing happens. That's the, fun the very fundamental understanding of architecture plan. Okay. Many the in software development life cycle, okay, we always ignore, I don't know, somebody initially the people who created this in the beginning, they thought targets or goal setting. It's not relevant to engineering. That's a huge mistake in my perspective. The goal was not the they now they assume the goal is something in the business which should not be explained to the engineers. Okay. That is one of the major reasons engineers fail to come with good problems. Because goals were not explained for. Okay. In architecture planning, it, it cannot be ignored because architecture planning is not done for engineering, it is done for the business itself. Okay. Enterprise architecture planning is for the entire enterprise. It is not for IT or developing any software application. Right? It is architecting 
and managing the entire enterprise. Okay, that's the enterprise architecture plan. Now, the iteration between preliminary and architecture vision okay, has to be multiple. The leaders can come with a few lines. I want to do this, I want to do this, I want to take my company to this much uh, million dollar and billion dollar or whatever, right? And I want to build, uh, you know, 100. Uh, okay, so. Architecture, when you say architecture planning or the architecture chart, you need to understand the architectures of business, enterprise, information technology, or kind of a subsets. The superset is Or operations or the infrastructure, you know, the underlying infrastructure. Then comes the information technology. Let's start from the peripheral vision. Vision and goals of the This drives everything. Vision and goals. cycle, right? You know how the gear box works, right? The gear system works here. That's what I have the here. So I have pulse the pulse testing. The each one of the each in the gear has to block it in order to push the other one. Same way you have the vision. The vision has to be Driving the vision has to drive the, the goals and vision has to drive the architecture. Which goes to So 
So it may go in this direction or that direction, it doesn't matter. What about the life cycle of architecture life cycle? Architecture life cycle has got nothing, nothing to do with it. The way it works is independent of vision. But it should it should be. It is the process of architecture planning is independent, but it should be working within the parameters of what the vision is. Okay, you cannot design an architecture which is not in alignment with the vision and goals of the organization. Okay, but they are independent processes. You can follow different life cycles for architecture. Then comes business architecture. Business architecture they works in alignment with it goes through the life cycle itself. So like this. It goes through its own life cycle. Business architecture. Then comes information system architecture. Information system architecture and technology or infrastructure architecture. They are two different things, right? You remember uh, our players. The strategy, business, operations, services, operations, and then the infrastructure, right? Infrastructure can be much of the time called as technology. So the technology infrastructure architecture is different from software architecture. This we are talking about. Of the, the information systems architecture, which is designing the components or services. Okay. Then it comes to technology architecture. Technology architecture, information systems architecture, business architecture. So, for the vision and goals, you create enterprise architecture, and according to the enterprise architecture, you design the business architecture. Then, according to the business architecture, you design the information systems or component architecture. Then, according to the information systems or component architecture, you design the technology or infrastructure architecture. But remember, each one of them are handled by various different departments. There is set of uh, people, there is set of uh, groups from different backgrounds. So they are independent. The, some of them apply engineering principles, some of them apply business principles. The people here for the vision and goals, they are business people, they are executives. You don't call them in business. They are executives or entrepreneurs, right? They work on very different abstractions. Okay. Mostly they approach their their skills are their skills are art, not science. Okay. And they are artistic as well. They take risks. They take, uh, you know, they visualize. They are imaginary. They come with a lot of goals which may not even, you know, can, may not be implemented easily. But they want to push it. Okay. So they are visionary people. They, they are target oriented people. They are. They are not. They are not necessarily come from. But we talk the language of possibility, production, um, the results. You know, right? Then comes the business. When I say the, 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 then comes the architects, enterprise architects. The enterprise architects' job is to conceptualize what the visionaries want, okay, and put it into a business abstraction. Enterprise architect. Should understand from enterprise perspective, enterprise as a 
construct by itself and then build, make a building blocks for each one of the imaginary contexts. Right? The imaginary goals can be realized through creating imaginary enterprise. Imaginary enterprise through these imaginary components. That's the job of enterprise. Okay. They, they, they combine things together to make them. Then comes the business architects. Business architects are the people who are more okay. So in this diagram, or uh, whatever I explained, you can see that in this diagram. Uh, see here the from strategic architecture. You call you know the capability architecture and then the segment architecture basically you know you you do this strategically and you, you visualize so many things as a as a business executive okay many times they are delusional also you know they are not you know apple ceo right? steve jobs was you know, he could able to see many things which other people could not. So then, from there, take it forward. To be very adamant. If you if you remember, uh, you know, very. Can you imagine who put? Does it make sense to put camera into cell phone? As a common sense person, you, are, you, you, you just imagine, does it make sense to put camera into cell phone? So, so, so stupid. Why do you need it? You, you buy digital camera separately if you want to take pictures. Why do you want to put camera into cell phone? I know you, you guys were not, you know, at the time, you, you, you just, did not get access to those things, but I'm telling you, I literally dismissed that as a stupid idea when first time the camera phone came. Why camera in the phone? If I need a camera to take pictures, there are beautiful and even those days we had excellent cameras to take even digital pictures. Why unnecessarily put the camera into something? See, now, the guy was so brilliant, I was a idiot, I dismissed it, first of all I did not get the idea, and he got it, and he, he got it, then the world has changed, probably if he did, and one day, if that guy did not think, even today, we probably will not be having camera, and it's always easy to argue somebody else would have thought it that way, I'm telling you, putting camera into cell phone is a vague idea, right? It's not a normal idea where somebody would have, been, you know, did that anyway. No, I don't think so. Telephone, we understand. Somebody would have invented it, if not, you know, but somebody would have invented electricity at one point of time and that. But not this. Putting camera into cell phone, that's it means a so stupid idea, right? Think, think for a while, it is a stupid idea. Putting, I'm not talking about now modern day you know, smartphones. I'm talking about the, the, the phones, you know, they are so difficult to you know, use the phones to face the bottom of the bar. And you have a camera. Even if it is handy, it's always better to create, get another camera which is handy. Why, why into the cell phone? I, first time I bought an uh, iPhone, I gave it back. Because I, I bought it for swiping, right? But then, then I saw that I could not able to hear properly. I dismissed it. First of all, you get your phone right, then talk about other things. Okay. But then eventually they got better, and I, I, I bought back my phone in 2007. It was earlier. That's what the leaders do. Okay. 
sometimes crazy ideas can be implemented very well and the world changes okay world change for good those crazy ideas can change the world completely instead of fighting you may be doing something else if not fighting correct why why to fight the screens you may be doing something else also. you never know right but those crazy ideas gets into the tangible implementable ideas only by architecting it and taking it forward to engineering if there is no engineering to do whatever the guys were come on putting camera into cell phone needs lot of design right the designer that the chief design engineer would have business it as a stupid idea but he did it anyway because his boss asked him to do it you know his boss what nonsense guy is asking him to do but it's a challenge putting camera into and putting into a into a cell phone and making both of them work and it worked because the guys uh, doing the engineering had the discipline to do the engineering process to implement it and make it work right so strategy uh, can be uh, can go out of you now the limits then the business is the one which brings them together the, the architects are the one who brings them together in good shape and then business really really define them to a great extent and then the engineering the capability guys the final guys who implement it goes on by the engineers then uh, the the father of information engineering uh, john zackman when he comes with when he came with the zackman framework the zackman framework was in you know, our last uh, session when we were discussing i explained about you know, the zackman framework the zackman framework uh, is like a periodic table where he managed to align all the components of the uh, enterprise closer to each other in a, in a, in a realistic way so that uh, the the primitive and composite processes can be designed okay that's how the zackman framework was uh, uh, successful high level framework okay well while zackman framework is like a periodic table it's a framework but it is not an implementable solution only you know because it doesn't enforces anything it doesn't give any uh, any definition for what uh, life cycle needs to be followed what process has to be followed okay so that is the only thing uh, you know, uh, which uh, gave opening uh, door uh, for making the and the price architecture plan where that must be more uh, realistic. Okay. Now, if you look into the periodic, the, the Zachman framework, Components 
developers and the need for contact. And then we created what then why who what needs to be standardized, what needs to be architected, what needs to be defined, what needs to be implemented, what needs usually what means usually what what does it mean? And you say what? What usually belongs to something, some tangible item. Here it is data. Something you know. The tangible object is what what. So data is what? So identifying data, defining the data at strategy level, architecture level, systems level, and component level. The same data has to be represented differently at different levels. Then when? When is time frame? The state machine, right? We need to have the state, the time state of every one of the artifact components of the enterprise. Then why? Why means the topic. You cannot you don't want to, you know, whether it is architecture like you know uh, Enterprise life cycle or business architecture life cycle or information systems architecture or any architecture life cycle without the target state. Why do you want to do the target state? You should not be moved to the target state. Right? If you want to go from one place to the other place, you should have a valid reason why you are doing it. Otherwise, the entire transformation will be a disaster, stupid transformation. So why has to be there? Then comes where? When? So when and why? And then finally, how? How? How is? Function. How are we doing? There's a function, functionality. How are you going to achieve? How are you going to achieve your strategy? How are you going to achieve your architecture? How are you this represents the functions, functional components of the enterprise. Okay, that's how we organize. But each one of the uh, you know why and how has to be asked at every Life cycle and the corresponding before every you know, uh, in, in software development life cycle, in order for you to design, you need the requirement documents to be developed. Right? Same way, in business architecture, in order to do business architecture, you need to have the enterprise architecture planning to be given to, you, to the business architecture. For the enterprise architecture planning, the guy needs the vision document, the preliminary, the preambles of the organization, the goals of the organization to be handed and do work in the form of documents. So there's an input, there's an output at every stage. Because imagine again, each one of these things, the entire enterprise is a state machine, it is a control system, right? And each one has input, output, and process. Okay, input, output, process, and control. The entire program has to be understood that way. Okay, every life cycle, there is an input document. Okay, there is input parameters. There is an input which is set of documents, so set of uh, you know, parameters, and there is an output which is again set of deliverables. 
But there are certain controls. You need to identify the controls at every life cycle level. Okay. You cannot do that without understanding. Okay. So every level there has to be a preliminary documentation, the baseline and then the target state, and not move from the baseline to the target state. You need to be applying certain controls, certain processes, and so and series of iterations to make it. Okay. That's how enterprise architecture life cycle has to be. In uh, year round, how are we going to help the customers do it in year round? Year round gives confidence for the enterprise architects the systems architects, the technology workers, the process analysts to do their job independently. Okay? While the system is being kept in tandem at one platform. Each one of them is like a gearbox. Okay? You have a big gearbox system. We are providing a gearbox system of the how independently to make them work individually. Okay? We give the platform. Then we give the life cycle also. We give them the life cycle. For them to implement their life cycle, we give the components. Okay? We give the components for implementing life cycle. We give the components for implementing the design of the architecture. Right? Each one of the architects at every level needs model to do the architecture. They are giving the modeling tool for each one of the architects to do their job. Correct? Then what they deliver is a input to the next level. What this guy deliver creates the business architecture document, the process architecture documents created using digital ELMT modeler will become input for the process analyst to take it forward in creating low-level business process. Then the low-level business process design becomes input for the software engineer to go on to implement the information system software. And the architect at that, that level also designs architecture, the system architecture, which again includes low-level process architecture. We give the tool for that aspect. We give tools for services design. We give tools for every level of high level, low level business process design. And we also give an environment for them to deploy it in the The only challenge is to create a tandem uh, overall organizational transformational system by which each one of the individuals work are being coordinated together being delivered. That's the challenge. Practically most of the tools would be working at individual levels. Okay? They give web services layer. So they give BPM to they give you know Java tools to develop Java applications. But giving a complete one platform where each one of the outputs and the life cycle for designing the outputs and making them to work in tandem together is what you will have to do. Okay. See here. As if is the current state. Strategy, business construction. Strategy goes with the driving factor. Then comes the business constraints. Then comes the operational constraints. The, the strategy drives the business, business drives the operations, then technology and infrastructure is driven by the operations. The technology components work in parallel with the with the help of the interfacing components, it works in terms of the services components. Okay? 
Then, the transformation happens in the future state. Did anything change in the future state? The structure of the organization, the organizational representation is the same. It is still the strategy, business, uh, operations, and technology. Okay? A lot of I had uh, opened the eyes uh, doors for understanding. That's what my job is. But, uh, before attending this session, if you are, if you have gone for uh, yoga, you probably would have not have under, understood anything. But now, if you go, you know, it, it's a say three four hundred page document, but 